What's good, family? What's good? It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru, and I'm here to give y'all my week seven picks. We are already in week seven. That's how fast this NFL season moves. We've seen some crazy things already this season. We're going to see more crazy things this season. Um, we've seen trades. Don't be surprised if you see more. I know this NFL players getting more empowered, want to move like the NBA brethren, and they just want to move to other situations. We've seen that a lot in the offseason, and this is why it's taking so long for certain teams to gel and and come together because of all of the player movement. And football isn't like basketball. It's easier to gel. Not that it's easy in basketball, Brooklyn Nets, but it's easier to gel in basketball than it is in football because you got 11 men and every all 11 got to be on the same accord. This is why teams went and bought offensive lines and you barely practice in the preseason, i.e. Cincinnati, and things start to gel midseason. But uh, let me get in my picks for week seven. He's starting off with the Atlanta Falcons on the road in Cincinnati. I'm taking Atlanta because Atlanta has busted every mother effing spread this year. I'm putting some respect on the Atlanta Falcons. Not just because of how well Marcus Mariota is playing. And y'all know I'm not a Mariota guy. Not just because of how well um, they're creative. Well, Arthur Smith is. With that running game, how they're able to use Mar- Mar- Mariota. He's not doesn't have to throw much. But that defense is hunting. It's fe- particularly that front. They are hunting. They are hunting. And with Cincinnati getting better week by week on the O-line, I think they can keep this game close. I think they can, if not win. I like Atlanta. Next game, we got Detroit coming off a bye week, a much-needed bye week. Getting six and a half on the road against Dallas. Now, Detroit has when playing well has one of the best offensive lines in the game. Now, coming off a bye week where they got blanked against New England. Shut out. Now, we all know the story with the Cowboys. Um Dak is gonna be back. They didn't they purposely didn't bring him back against Philly. And I think that was a smart move. Um I think that was a smart move. Philly's the best team in football. Um now Dak is back. The question my everyone says, can they stick with the same game plan with a more talented quarterback? I don't th- think that'll be a problem, particularly this week, as far as them doing that. Because you're going against Detroit. Hey, why does I love their coach? Much I love their O line and their running game. Um they don't defend very well. They give up a lot of big plays. So even if Dallas doesn't and get pass happy, Detroit gives up a lot of big plays. A lot. And Dallas will score a lot of points. Um, I do think offensively Detroit's going to get back to looking like they were looking beforehand. And they're going to score a lot of points. But I do think Dallas gets back on. Get, gets back on. I do think Dallas offensively eventually will just overwhelm them. Because Dallas's defense can stop a Detroit's offense, if they get pass happy, Detroit runs the football very well, which Dallas does not do stop the run very well. But if Dallas gets out in front um, too much, then Detroit will have to throw more, and that could be problematic. And I think Dallas will win this game by 10 points. Take the Cowboys. Indianapolis on the road against Tennessee. Indy, quiet as kept, has won a few games in a row. Getting back to doing what they do best. Quiet as kept. Tennessee has won a few games in a row, getting back to what they do best. And now they're playing, I think they're ready for the second time, and Tennessee's coming off a bye. Tennessee is home, coming off a bye. Great coach. I like Tennessee. Take the Titans. Green Bay is on the road against the sorry-ass commanders. Now, Green Bay has a hard time scoring the football. Washington has a hard time stopping anyone from doing anything. They still don't have Chase Young. It doesn't matter. You got a whole bunch of other first-round picks on that defense. We're just not producing. I just don't think Ron Rivera is getting anything out of that team. Um, his days are numbered, unfortunately. I mean, God bless him. We like I like Ron Rivera, the man. But the coach, I, the coach, 
I won't say anything disparaging about him. Uh, and then you got Taylor Heineke. I think Taylor Heineke will give that offense some juice because they're used to having him. And I wouldn't be surprised if they liked him personally if the players in there liked him more than they liked Carson Wentz. So um, Green Bay's giving four and a half. I actually like Washington to cover. I like Washington to cover. If not win, take the commanders. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay on the road against Carolina. Carolina's starting the third string quarterback. Not even Sam Donald. Definitely not Baker Mayfield. Some third string quarterback. And the Bucks are not, are not going to lose. Back to back weeks. Now, I predicted last week because of the coaching staff and the team they're playing against. I didn't think they'll lose. I thought that at the very least they wouldn't cover. But now they're not going to lose back-to-back games against such inferior teams. Even though bad the game, bad the games, I don't care. Tampa's going to win. They're giving 13. They're going to cover all that shit. In, in fact, that's my Stone Cold lock. Tampa covering against Carolina. Take it to the bank. We have my New York football giants, 5-1. and 5-1 and one against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, Giants have been winning games that on paper looks like they shouldn't win. Credit Brian Dayball having a game plan. The team is very resilient. They're very opportunistic defensively. Offensive lineup is playing very well. Andrew Thomas is still the number one rated tackle in football. Number one rated lineman in football, period, this year. And, and on top of that, you have a deep Daniel Jones has been excellent on third down, even third and longs. So with all that being said, now you're playing against teams that you're expecting to win against. Even though Jacksonville's given three because they're in Jacksonville, Jacksonville's a very talented team. They have a great front who's been playing well. Fuck what the odds make it say. Football people, it's gonna be like, okay, if you're a five and one team, you're expected to win this game. You're expected to walk out of this game six and one. Yes, Evan Ingram's going to gonna be playing against Evan Ingram again. But you're expected to, to win this football game. This is what I think is going to be the real test. Not just handle adversity. Can you handle prosperity? I like my Giants. Pull out a win. In this real test, take my Giants. Cleveland on the road against Baltimore. Baltimore should be undefeated with their 500 team. Why situational football in the fourth quarter? Why also they getting too pass happy with um too pass happy with Lamar Jackson instead of focusing on the run game? Now yes, Lamar Lamar has made strides offensively, throwing from the pocket, but I think too much of that is what's contributed to his mistakes. A the interceptions, A the fumbles. He's very careless with the football. Why? He runs for it too. No one can catch him. Guess what? When he finally does get caught, he ends up coughing up the football. Like last week when my boy Thibodeau sacked him. So these are the things that was happening with them last year. And it was excused because so many guys they had injured. Guess what? It's happening again now. It's happening again now. What's going to be the remedy to this situation? They get a get right game against Cleveland at home. I'm taking Baltimore. Jets even money. Well, it was even money against Denver. But Russell Wilson will not be playing. Nothing to talk about. I was thinking about taking the Jets. Anyway, now with Russell Wilson not playing because of his hamstring, you got to take the Jets. Now we have Houston coming off a bye. Houston's coming off a bye. Playing against the Raiders, who are also coming off a bye in Vegas. Um, Raiders are just too talented offensively. Too talented offensively. I mean... They're too talented to not get this right and at least be a team that can score a ton of points. They have guys defensively, not to be a great unit, but be a complementary unit. Um, to be, but to be a complementary unit. And Houston, Houston's doing their thing, A, the quarterback, and B, just coaching. The coach, I mean, he's really getting the most out of this team. But uh, LA's just too talented. And uh, this is a time of season because nobody really playing in the preseason. 
I think now you're going to start seeing where teams are supposed to be, and I'm taking the Raiders. Raiders are giving seven. I'm taking the Raiders. You got Seattle on the road against the Chargers. Now, Seattle has been the surprise team this year, and Geno Smith has been the surprise player this year. Whoever said you saw Geno, this out of Geno Smith, like I posted on IG, if you saw this out of Geno Smith and you ain't his mama, you're a goddamn liar. I didn't even think he'd be starting. But it's, it's, what to me this shows is, A, just not the work he's put in, salute to him, but look at the players, the skill position players. They found a running back. The offensive line is playing so much better. And you got Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf to throw it to. They got weapons galore. <laughs> like, they do. It's not, did you get, and, and the fact they found a running game and the off O line is playing better. Like, you know, they, they, they seem to have hit on those picks. They, they, they picked a left tackle high and then they picked a the right tackle and they seem to have hit. Russ was there where they were missing, whiffing over and over and over again. Had those skill position players, didn't have consistency at running back because Carson was always hurt. You found the running back. Seemed like defensively, you found your corner. You found your corner. That kid number 27, you found your corner. <sighs> Remember, this team was built in the draft, hitting on low-round guys. Richard Sermon, Cam Chancellor. Earl Thomas was a first-round pick, but you hit on. That's the Legion of Boom right there. You hit with the number one, with your number one pick that year with um Earl Thomas. Can't miss. Cam Chancellor was a low round pick. Richard Sherman was a low round pick. Brandon Browner was a low round pick. You hit on all three of those guys. Just saying. But uh, the Chargers, we all know how talented the football team the Chargers are. Even though they don't have the left tackle, they don't have Bosa. Mac Daddy's playing good football this year. Thank God he's healthy. Um, Justin Herbert is not completely healthy, but he's still balling. And Austin Eckler is balling. Austin Eckler is like a little motherfucker's a touchdown machine. Um, little motherfucker's a touchdown machine. I like the Chargers to win this game. Only thing that's going to fuck this game up is that coach Brandon Staley. <laughs> he is going to coach them out of the playoffs yet again, but they'll win this game. We got Casey on the road. Against San Fran, the Super Bowl rematch. Now San Fran also, like I said, big trades. They just traded for Christian McCaffrey. That's huge. Huge, huge, huge. You're giving Kyle Shanahan, who I think is the best offensive mind in football, um, an actual weapon at a position that he is so good and creative, doesn't actually need a special guy at that position. So this, is to me, is a luxury. And you're giving Jimmy Garoppolo more ways to be able to just dump it down and be effective and not have to do that much. To go along with San Fran was probably the best defense in football. Now, Casey, Casey, defensively, they are better. They do still have issues defending the run. If Casey could ever just be a great run defense, be a great run defense, make teams one dimensional. I mean, that'll help Patrick Mahomes so much, but, I mean, they can force turnovers and things of that nature, but they're not a great run defense. And, um, I know how much I love Patrick Mahomes. I think he's the best quarterback in football. But, um, I'm taking San Fran. I'm taking San Fran to win this game. Then we got Chicago. I have 10 days preparation to play in the New England Patriots Monday night. We still don't know if it's going to be Zappi or Mac Jones. Guess what? I do not care whichever one of them plays. I don't care whichever one of them plays. They give me six, seven and a half. And they will cover every single one of them. Chicago cannot throw the ball. They are showing the world how not to groom a young quarterback. And Zappi's playing well. If it is Mac Jones, he needs to come in and ball. I will say that because Zappi was playing very, very well. And you already see Bill Belichick has a tendency of taking the backup quarterback. <laughs> Just saying. Those are my picks for week seven. 
Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. It's your boy, Urban Sports School. I'm out. Salute.